Hey guys, welcome to the video where I share my favorite books of the year thus far. We're pretty much halfway through the year. I've had a lot of good reads. I think there's 18 books on this list. I didn't try to limit the number at all. I just went through the books that I've read and picked out the ones that really stick with me, even though some of them it's been months since I read it. Um, I'm going to be very brief talking about each of them, otherwise this will be too long. But if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the books, I've talked about them all in my monthly wrap-ups. Although there's, I think, one of them thus far from June, and I will have a June wrap-up in that. I have separated this by genre. I don't usually do that, I'm usually too lazy, but I decided to this time. To give you an idea of what you're getting into, I have a lot of books in the fantasy series, a few in the science fiction genre, some mysteries, a contemporary, a couple middle grade, and a couple historical fiction. We're gonna go in that order. This year has definitely been a fantasy heavy year for me, and I found a really good selection of fantasy books. So let's start with those. First up, I just read this one a couple weeks ago, bought this for my birthday, shared it in a birthday book haul. This will be in my June wrap up as well, but it is Heart of Red, Blood of Blue by Rebecca Belliston. I didn't really know anything going into this book other than I've only heard people rave about it, but I didn't know anything about it. If you are interested in fantasy, but aren't really into fantasy, this is a good book to start with because the only fantastical element is set is that it's set in a fictitious land and it's got it's got the, like the medieval setting but there's no magic or anything like that there is a character people think have magic because she's an albino so she's different and they don't know what to do with that but there's no actual magic so in this one we follow Gisela who is an albino and she is the last surviving princess of her kingdom last surviving heir all her siblings have been killed off by Bloodless Kristoff. Bloodless Kristoff is working for the queen of a neighboring kingdom, and there is this war that's been going on since Gisela was betrothed, her betrothal ceremony at the age of seven. At that ceremony, her betrothed and his father were both killed, and the queen has tried to get revenge for that. And so this book is her trying to hide away from Bloodless Kristoff and also not get killed, it's her um, being then betrothed to a terrible man and lots of things happen, lots of surprises. I really enjoyed it, highly recommend it. Another fairly recent read for me is Winterheart. This one has wintry vibes. We are set in the cold and snow. And in this one, we have a prince who is escaping assassins right off the bat. And he goes to a neighboring kingdom and kind of falls in with the head mage and the head mage's apprentice and in the prince's land magic is like frowned upon like it's scary he's constantly scared that the head mage and apprentice are going to do something like terrible to him meanwhile there is also this sickness going throughout the land that the mage's apprentice is trying to figure out what's going on trying to figure out how to heal people this is going to be the first book in a series and i can't wait to continue it because I have questions that have not been answered, so definitely going to be continuing that. Next up is Saints and Monsters. This is a fantasy book with dragons set in Japan or a Japan-like setting. The author Ellen McGinty actually lives in Japan, so she's pretty cool to follow on Instagram. She's often wearing different kimonos. It's pretty neat. And in this one, our main character is the second princess. Her sister is supposed to be um, going through the coronation to become the queen in this kingdom. It's a queenship, not a kingdom. And so her sister's about to be coronated and then she gets poisoned and is kind of like in this sleep-like state. And the main character actually has this, what they call, I think they call it a blue disease. She has blue hair and a crooked spine. So she was never fit to be the queen because in order to go through the coronation ceremony, like there's dragons that attend. And I think the last blue queen, the attempted blue queen, I think the dragons killed her. And so our main character doesn't want to become the queen while her sister is in this state. She doesn't want to be killed, 
but she needs to figure out how to find like the antidote to this poison and who poisoned her sister and so we follow her on that adventure. Then we've got Blood of Stars, which I forgot to grab. Jared just started reading it. Blood of Stars by Karen Norton, also the first book in a series. If you want something that feels like the Stormlight Archive without as much of a commitment, that's what this book gives me vibes of even though it's not like the same storyline. It's so interesting to me as someone that's like newer to fantasy hearing the synopsis of these books as I'm going through them fairly quickly how many of them have to do with kings and queens. Once again we follow a prince. Years ago when he was like eight I think he was spending a year with this priestess. I don't remember the purpose of that year but the priestess's daughter had a magic that she almost like couldn't control like daisies would sprout up around her and the prince saw this child get kidnapped and the people that kidnapped her used a star bridge where they kind of jumped from one world to the other and he is constantly searching for her he owns a ship and he's traveling around trying to find more information about these star bridges trying to find evidence of where this girl has gone so we follow him we follow the girl and we have another character who we don't know much about. Um, definitely almost like a, a mage-like character, I would say. Like she's, she's really old. That's really all we know about her for a long time. And it's a big book, lots happens, but I'll leave it at that. Here's a fantasy that has nothing to do with kings or queens, really. Um, the Life Between Worlds is very Narnia-esque. This is by Laura E. Weymouth. And in this one, we have siblings that go from World War II, they're in a bunker waiting for their parents to come in and all of a sudden they're in the woodlands of this other kingdom. And we flip back and forth in the chapters to them after their time in this kingdom. So I think we are six years later, I believe. Um, so they're trying to figure out how to live in this world, even though it's been six years. Um, our main character doesn't feel like she fits into this world. She feels like she fits into the woodlands. So we flip back and forth between them kind of like present day in the 1950s and then them in the woodlands. And I have said time and time again about this book, this is the best depiction that I have seen of like mental health and depression in a way that I ache for our main character, but she's not like super irritating. I feel like we have a good amount of seeing her struggles, feeling sympathy for her, wanting more for her, without it just feeling whiny. And that's a very hard line for authors to be able to do, I find. So this book doesn't feel very fantasy. In many ways it feels very historical fiction because we're like set in the 1950s. Our main character is at boarding school for girls trying to figure out how to fit in. And then like when we flip back to the other chapters in the woodlands, then it's kind of fan- well, I mean it is fantasy, but it, it felt almost more like a historical fiction book. I recommend all of these books. I will continue to recommend this one. And then the last one for the fantasy section is Mortal Queens by Victoria McCombs, another book that I've been raving about nonstop since I read it in like February, I think. And book two is coming out in November. So we can get an entire, is it a duology? I'm not sure if it's a duology or more, but we can get two books in one year from a series. So in this one, we are with Thea. She lives on one of, she lives on the center island of these five islands and every year a girl is chosen from the center island to become the mortal queen for the fae world and this year Thea is chosen as the mortal queen and it's something that people like they get so excited when their daughter is chosen there's a lot of money that goes to the family that stays behind Thea is very excited to be chosen but she very quickly comes to realize that being chosen as the next mortal queen. It has a lot more complications than she realized and I really enjoyed seeing her deal with that and I need to know where the story is going to go because I gobbled this up so fast and can't wait for book two. Okay, now we are on to science fiction, which arguably I enjoy more than fantasy, but I have a harder time finding good books. I've enjoyed science fiction longer than fantasy for sure. 
So the first one on here is going to be the Chaos Grid, Chaos Grid by Lindsay Llewellyn. I just did a giveaway for this at the end of May. I feel like you guys probably know that I love it. It is a standalone. Found that out in my May wrap up as I was talking about the book. I was a little sad about that because I loved this world. So we follow, I always forget if her name is Juniper. I always forget if it's Juniper or Jupiter. Um, Juniper. Her aunt and uncle that she has been kind of raised by want her to go to university in this domed city called Plex City. She lives in Texas, it's 22, 24, I think. And years ago there, something happened. Texas is a wasteland, only domed cities are the, really the only places you can live. So her aunt and uncle want her to go to university in Plex City, but that's where her parents were murdered and she saw them murdered. So she really doesn't want to go there. So instead, she decides to become a shipper, which are people that drive these trucks between the domed cities as well as places where they have gardens to for the food to supply to the domed cities. So we follow her there and lots of things go wrong. There are these storms out between the cities. There's creatures that are different. I really enjoyed this. I was so sad that this was it. I'm gonna have to reread it just to live in this world again. Once again, highly recommend. My other science fiction that I have to recommend is Enhanced by Candace Cade. I really enjoyed the tech in this world. So we follow Lee Urban, who is a natural in a world of Enhanced. So she's trying to hide the fact that she doesn't have any of these super abilities that other people have around her. And at the beginning of the book, she's going to university where I think when she turns 18, so she's not quite there yet, a lot of her information goes online. So kind of until now, she's just been able to hide a little easier. But once she turns 18, things are going to get a little bit more difficult for her. Once you hit that age, you get a soc, which is like a, a social score. And like the more popular people you hang out with, the higher your social score, the better you are at certain things, the higher your social score. And her parents have told her if she gets a social score of a certain number, then they will let her become an artist, which is what she's always dreamed of, instead of following their path that they want her to go down. Uh, she enjoys motorcycle racing. And right at the beginning of the book, there is someone that contacts her in a way that can't be traced and tells her not to go to university, pretty much letting her know something's going to happen to her or someone's looking for her or something like that. So the whole time she's at university, she's also keeping an eye out for this. It was a fun read and I continued on with book two. I don't know how long the series is going to be, but I plan on continuing it. Next up is the mystery section. Uh, it's not going to be that much of a surprise that there's going to be some of my favorites in here, my all-time favorites. We'll start with Mrs. Polifax. So a poem from Mrs. Polifax. You know, sometimes, sometimes the back of these books is just the best. This is by Dorothy Gilman. These were published in the 1970s. Mrs. Polifax was leading a very full life garden club, karate, yoga, and a little spine now and then. I mean, throw in some awesome hats and that is Mrs. Polifax. When she, once she hit like 60, 65, she went to the doctor. She was feeling a bit depressed and he asked her, if there was something that she's always wanted to do with her life, she goes, yes, I've always wanted to be a spy. So she goes to the CIA and kind of accidentally gets hired as a courier, a CIA courier, and goes on, all, goes on all these adventures. This time, the mission is to track down a missing package of plutonium, just enough to make a small atom bomb. In this one, we go to Switzerland with her. And what I, I love about this is, first of all, she's not just like a dim-witted lady that accidentally gets things right. She uses her brains. And then like, there's always a, what to me is just a hilarious scene where someone's like, I thought you were just like a respectable little old lady and here they're dragging a dead body together or something. In this one, someone says, have you noticed how carefully they keep their distance from us? It's like a planned choreography, downright obvious. They're aware that I know some karate, explained Mrs. Polifax. This is just a fun series. Just so thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. Then I've got a couple Agatha Christie. So I'm reading one a month and sharing full videos as I read through them over on Patreon. So I'm not gonna talk about them much here, but my two favorites so far have been the man in the brown suit. In this one, we have a character that sees a man electrocuted on, what is it? On some kind of rails. And Scotland Yard says it's an accident but she saw something when the man was electrocuted. There was 
a guy that examined the body and something fell out of his pocket, which was a message that said 17-122 Kilmorden Castle. And then Anne goes off following him and tries to figure out what's all going on. I really, really enjoyed that. And then my other Agatha Christie was The Secret of Chimneys. So in this one, we have a man that's in Africa somewhere and his friend asks him for a favor. He asks him to take these documents that he has to a publisher in England. I mean, they must be friends because he, he leaves Africa, goes and does this. And right off the bat, something fishy is going on because people are trying to get these documents from him. They've got people um, setting up like fake people to come get them, someone's breaking into his hotel room, and there's a lot of different things going on. There were a few characters in this book that I really enjoyed. I feel like Agatha Christie, she can do such a great job writing unique characters. Like I feel like Agatha Christie and Dorothy Gilman would have got along really well it's been said that Mrs. Polifax is the American version of Miss Marple. Not that this one was a Miss Marple, but there's there's a lot of similarities in their writing. I enjoy that. And then I have one more in the mystery section. I don't really know if that's the section, the genre it should really be in, but it, it was a mystery and it was the mystery that kept me going. And it's very different. It's What Happens Next by Christina Suzanne Nelson. This is a dual timeline story where at the beginning of the book, we are following this woman who has a podcast, I think it's a true crime podcast, and she gets a message from this one summer, she had a best friend, and this message is from this best friend's sister. What happened the summer after they spent this entire summer just being like tight as tight can be, that girl went missing, and our main character never heard about that. And so she gets this message that says, oh, you know, I'm so bad at names. This is why I'm not saying names. Um, so and so went missing that summer. I was just wondering if you could investigate for your podcast. And she was like, what? Like she went missing? I just kind of thought maybe she didn't actually like me and she never continued this friendship. So she starts digging into it. And so we get, I think the main character's in name is Faith in this one, maybe, maybe I'm right. She starts investigating, so we get her chapters of that, and then we get these flashbacks to their childhood that like one summer. Oh man, that book was really good. I can't believe I haven't continued with any more Christina Suzanne Nelson because I really want to. I really enjoyed that. Next up is my single contemporary book, and that is Clock Tower Bound by Shatona Havig. This is the second book in the book strings series, although there are two novellas that go before it, or you don't have to read before, but I would recommend reading before. So we have this character named Milton. He gets companies out of debt, dire straits, pulls them up so that they can continue on. In the Bookstring series, he's doing that with bookstores. And so in this one, we have a girl named Cezanne. She owns a bookstore and her best friend owns another bookstore across the street things went down, blew up, they started, they had a bookstore together, and now they have two. Um, a little bit awkward. This book is so good at tackling hard conversations, and I love that Shatona modeled this character, Cezanne, after Anne of Green Gables, as well as Darling Desi on YouTube, because I could just see it as I was reading it. I'm like, yeah, that's totally the vibes I'm getting. I always love Shatona's humor, and this one, and like she, she always does a really good job hitting hard topics and bringing faith into her books. But I feel like this one is like a really difficult problem to have to figure out and I really enjoyed how she approached it. Okay, middle grade time. This is getting so long, I need to be faster. Middle grade, The Girl Who Kept the Castle. This is a middle grade fantasy that I read, I think in May and it's like deep and has dark but light winds out, but is also like humorous and whimsical. So our main character, Faye, lives in Wizard West's tower. So there's a wizard for each direction. And right as the book opens up, Wizard West is actually dead. Um, I think the first sentence says something like, Wizard West was dead for nearly a day before he realized it. And it falls on Faye's shoulders to be the one to tell him that he's dead. And he, attempts to turn her into a cat as a result, but because he's dead, his magic is pretty low, so he halfway turns her into a cat. And he sets up 
this competition for his apprentice because he never named it an apprentice so there is no second wizard west coming up and so he sets up this competition he's trying to let not let anyone else outside the castle know that he's dead and all these young guys come in to try to compete to be the next wizard west so many things go wrong it is so funny um but there's also like some dark stuff going on behind the scenes kind of that needs to be dealt with definitely recommend it my 11 year old's gonna be reading it soon i actually think i think it's I'm filming this on Monday the 17th. I think it comes out tomorrow. It comes out in June sometime. Very different vein. I've got Hidden by Helen Frost. This is, it says an accidental kidnapping leaves two girls grasping for answers. It is a free verse novel where a man shoots someone in a store and then steals a car. He doesn't realize that in that car is a girl. She stays hidden in the vehicle and then he pulls into his garage. He doesn't know she's in there. And then he goes inside and watches the news and realizes that there was a girl in the vehicle and she hides in the garage. But this man has a daughter and she assumes that that girl is in the garage. So she leaves some food for her. And that's, where I, that's all I'm gonna say. There's, there's more to the book. There's a lot more to it. It's really good, it's really short. I would recommend it. We've got Song for a Whale. This is a book that took me forever to get to and I wish I would have got to it sooner because it was really good. Our main character is deaf and she learns about a whale that sings at a different pitch, it's not the right word, frequency than other whales and she feels sorry for it, can kind of relate to it. So she tries to create a song for it and she goes on a very big adventure to try to play this song for this whale. And last up we've got historical fiction. So we've got The Last Year of the War by Susan Meisner. This one is dual timeline where we follow a main character I think in 2010-ish. She has Alzheimer's and I would got to say at the beginning of the book I was a little worried because she's she's named her Alzheimer's. She's I can't remember what his name was. Agnes. So I was like what are we even talking about? <laughs> so that threw me for a loop for the first few pages. Um, so she has Alzheimer's but then we also flip back to 1940 I know it's called the last year of the war but we actually start in 1943 yeah 1943 her father is accused of being a Nazi sympath sympathizer her parents immigrated from Germany back when they were like right when they were first married and never became American citizens so and there's like a bunch of things that look really sketchy so they spend some time at an internment camp and we flip back and forth between the summer they spend at this internment camp mostly and our main character Elise trying to find the friend that she made at that internment camp it it made me emotional for sure and the other one i don't know if i even still own but i enjoyed the book of lost names by Kristen harmel once again we got world war ii we've got a character whose father gets arrested, similarities, but her and her mother actually move to the south of France and she starts forging documents so that children can, Jewish children, can escape the country. Lots of emotions in that one too, for sure. So I feel like this video is super long, sorry about that, but lots and lots of good books. I hope you guys use some of these recommendations, read them, love them. If you guys had some favorites from the year so far, please leave them in the comments because I would love to check them out.